Welcome to this new topic on human reproductive system. As I discuss this lesson, this work was supposed to be covered in class 6 and it is also covered in class 8. So for reference, use the textbook for class 6. You can also use the textbook for class 8. This now will be our first lesson. Welcome. Reproduction. What is reproduction? This is a process through which an adult female will give birth to a young one that resembles the mother. So as we discuss this topic, remember reproduction is a process through which a female adult will, pro will give birth to a young one that resembles the mother. Now after this lesson, the learner should be able to, number one, name the parts of female reproductive parts. Number two, the learner should also be able to state the function of each part of the female reproductive part. Let us begin our lesson. We shall look at the female reproductive system. I will use this diagram here to help me to show you or to explain the various parts of the female reproductive parts. This diagram shows the position of the female reproductive part in relation to other parts. We shall begin with the part that is above, although these two organs here are not related to the female reproductive parts. And these are the kidneys. One is on the left, the other one is on the right. And below it, you'll find that we've got a tube that is called ureter and it allows the urine to go through it up to where we have the bladder. From there now, let us begin. We have this part here that is called the oviduct. It is also known as fallopian tube. This is a very important part in a female reproductive part. Now the oviduct, towards the end of it where we have the ovaries, it is funnel like shaped so that the ovaries can be able can be accommodated there and once the ova is released it can be able to pass through that tube so that is the ovary and ovaries are two one on the left the other one is on the right then let's go to this part here which we call the uterus or the whoop these are the walls of the uterus, these are the muscles of the uterus, and the uterus itself is a tube. It is a tube. We shall look at the function of each of these as we go on. Below the uterus down here, we have a part or a section that is called the cervix, which separates the uterus and the vagina. That is the vagina. It is also a tube. From the vagina, we've got this organ here, which we call the bladder. And a bladder has got a tube, which will allow urine to pass out from the body, and this tube is called urethra. These are the various parts of the female reproductive system. I will now narrow my lesson to the main parts of the female reproductive parts and their function. My diagram is there so that as we mention any of these parts, you can be able to identify it where it is. Now, the main parts of the female reproductive system will now include one, ovary, two, oviduct or fallopian tube, uterus, and the vagina. These four main parts are the ones that we are going to discuss and the function of each. We shall begin with the ovaries. Now, a female has two ovaries as you can see here. 
and they are located below the kidneys in the lower abdomen. In the lower abdomen. The ovaries are two, one on the left, the other one is on the right. Now, the ovaries normally produce the female sex cell. They produce the female sex cell that we call ova. Now, what happens with the ovary is that each ovary will produce one ovum every alternate month. Every alternate month. This implies that if one ovary produces over this month, then the next one will produce over after 28 days. In other words, if this month this ovary produces over, next month it will not produce. Instead, it is the other one that is going to produce the ova. That is what it means by this statement that a ova or another ovary produces one ovum every alternate month. Now let us look, or rather let us uh, look at the oviduct or the fallopian tube. That is the position of the oviduct. That is the position of the oviduct. What is its purpose? Well, oviduct is a tube itself which has a funnel-like opening near the ovary. If you look at the head of the oviduct, it is wider, so that it can accommodate the ovary. And once the ovary produces ova, this head of the oviduct will receive the ova through it up to where it is going to meet the male sex cell, that is the sperm. The oviduct is also known as fallopian tube. Now, oviduct is a passage through which ovum passes when released by the ovary. That is, when the ovary produces the ovum, the ova will pass through this tube. It will pass through there. And as it passes through here, if it happens to meet the male sex cell, this is where fertilization is going to take place. So, fertilization will take place in the oviduct, although the fertilized egg, after fertilization here, that fertilized egg will not remain here. It will move slowly and it will attach itself around this part of the uterus. Let us look at the uterus. Uterus can also be referred to as a womb. And uterus normally connects the vagina at a point that we call cervix. If you look at the position of the uterus, below here, there is this section that we call the cervix. And the cervix normally remains crossed and it separates the uterus and the vagina. The cervix, as I've said, crosses the lower head of the uterus where it joins the vagina. Now, the fertilized egg, as we have seen, after fertilization, that fertilized egg will move and it will attach itself here. That is, the fetus will attach itself there and the fetus will remain in the uterus until the mother gives birth. So development of the uterus, or the development of the fetus will be taking place here. And in the process, the uterus will enlarge so that it can accommodate the developing fetus. Finally, let us look at the vagina. That is the position of the vagina. And the vagina normally communicates with the penis for the release of the male sex cell, that is the sperms. The penis will be inserted into the vagina and this tube will allow the sperms to swim through the cervix all the way to the uterus up to the fallopian tube. And therefore, we can say therefore that the vagina will produce or rather will uh, provide an interface for the penis so that 
it, the penis can be able to release the sperms which would go and do the fertilization of the ova. The process through which the vagina will communicate with the penis, that process is called sexual intercourse. So sexual intercourse normally takes place through the vagina. Now, the vagina can also be an opening through which the baby will pass during birth. Once the fetus develops in the uterus, during the time of giving birth, that is the, that is the, uh, that is the place where the baby will pass out. In fact, the vagina is called the birth canal. Well, that will mark the end of our first lesson and I would request you to subscribe so that you continue receiving other lessons. Thank you very much.